Okay, we are uh, going to continue our investigation of digraphs now uh, by looking to the concept of Eulerian. So you should remember from the setting of undirected graphs what Eulerian means. You'll recall that a graph, an undirected connected graph is Eulerian if it has a closed walk, so a walk that starts and ends at the same vertex, that has the property that it uses each edge exactly one time. Uh, now we are going to be doing digraphs now. We have already introduced digraphs and the notion of a directed walk. Of course, a directed walk, it looks more or less like a walk in the underlying graph, in the underlying undirected graph, that is, but we have the stipulation that you have to respect the ordering of the edges. So if you want a directed walk and you want to go from V1 to E1 to V2, then that edge E1 had better be directed from V1 to V2. Right, so you have, can only take edges in the forward direction. So that's a directed walk, perfectly natural concept. And we, we then kind of have an automatic notion of Eulerian, right? Uh, so let me, um, let me go ahead and put the definition up. So a closed, a closed uh, directed walk in a digraph D is Eulerian if it uses each edge exactly once. And if, um, if such a walk exists, we call D Eulerian. Right, so, uh, so this is just the same notion that we had in the undirected setting, but we're now doing it in, in digraphs where we have directed walks instead of, uh, instead of walks. And, uh, and in fact, what's gonna play out here is very, very similar to the story that we had for undirected graphs. So for undirected graphs, you'll recall that the, this question of whether or not a graph is Eulerian, actually very, very simple. It just came down to a, a, a local constraint that every vertex must have even degree. And we're gonna, we're gonna see that there's an analogous thing that happens in the directed setting, and then our, our theorem from this lesson will be a proof that, uh, that in fact, if you don't have this obvious obstruction, then you are in fact Eulerian. So it's really gonna be much, much the same as the undirected setting. Uh, and kind of what happens here is, you know, we've, you know, we've been doing regular, ordinary undirected graphs for much of the term. Some of the concepts that have been defined there roll over very naturally and play very much the same way in the directed setting. And some things just uh, behave very differently. So uh, this is a case where everything kind of goes smoothly. Really, there, we don't even need any new ideas. We're just gonna use exactly the same kind of reasoning and, and get to uh, uh, an analogous answer over here in the directed setting. Um, so, which is, which is nice. I mean, it's not, you know, it's a, it's a case where things didn't get more complicated. So, I mean, there's something certainly nice about that. Um, let's, uh, let me, let me go back to the undirected setting and, and kind of remind you of that obstruction. So let me, let's uh, sort of, I'll talk about the, this will be the undirected setting over here and I'll go directed over here. So again, let's, uh, Let's think about the undirected setting and remind ourselves what the uh, what the obstruction is. So if I, I uh, let's assume the graph is connected now, then the the only obstruction was a was a, a vertex of odd degree. <clears throat> and what happens here is it's actually very easy to see. If you assume that your graph is Eulerian, let's pretend that we do have an Eulerian graph, and uh, so that means that there's a closed walk using every edge exactly one time. And imagine that we have some vertex that's not the start or the end. It, it, the start or the end, you, I mean, you can shift to a, to a range for that. So it's not really asking for anything. Let's just think about a vertex that's not the beginning or the end. And let's suppose that in the course of this Euler walk, you visit the vertex k times. So let me just draw a vertex here. Um, <clears throat> here's a vertex v. Suppose we want to visit v 
k times in this Euler walk, then uh, what's going to happen here? Well, every, every time we come to this vertex, we have to come in on some edge and then go out on some edge. And if we're going to do this k times and you have to use each edge exactly once, then you'd better have degree of, of v equal to exactly 2k, right? If I, I mean, in my picture here, if I want to visit the vertex v, uh, say here I can do it three times, I might come in like this once and this once and this once. But you see that my visits have to use each edge exactly one time and each visit costs me two edges. So if I want to visit the vertex v k times, I need to have the degree of v equal to 2k, right? So if I'm going to have a graph that does have an Euler walk, it had better be the case that every vertex has even degree. And, uh, and I'll remind you that in the undirected setting, assuming your graph is connected and does satisfy that condition, then we prove that you are in fact Eulerian, then you do have this Eulerian walk. Now let's, uh, uh, now let's just hop over to the directed setting and, and, and see what happens over there. Right, so same kind of game. We'll imagine that we have a directed graph that does have uh, an Eulerian walk. So a directed closed walk that visits each, sorry, that uses each edge exactly one time. Let's think about the same game. Suppose I give you some little vertex out here that I will, uh, that I'll again call V. Well, and, and let's assume again that I visit V k times in this in this Euler walk. So again, I'll assume that v is not the start and end vertex, just for simplicity. Um, you can use the same argument there, but you just have to be a little careful what happens at the ends. But it's just easier to imagine v in the middle. So if I imagine v in the middle, again, I'm going to take this Euler walk. It's going to use each edge exactly one time, and we're respecting the orientation. Now, if you're going to visit the vertex v k times, each time you come into the vertex V, you're coming in on an edge that's directed toward V, and each time you leave, you're leaving on an edge that's directed away from V. So if you're going to visit, if you want to visit V exactly K times, and you need, again, to use every edge exactly once, then it had better be the case that, uh, I've gone very Christmassy with my um, uh, uh, example colors here. It'd better be the case that the out degree of V and the in degree of v are equal to 2k, right? If I want to visit v exactly k times and I need to use each edge exactly once, then each time you come into v, well, that's going to be a different edge directed into v, and that has to use them up completely, so the in degree should be k. As well, every time you leave, you're going to use uh, uh, one of the, the edges that are that's leaving v, that's directed away from v. You're are going to visit v k times you're going to use k of those edges and that has to um that has to be the whole out degree so um so the short of this is that we've got a very very similar looking condition here in the directed setting if you have a directed graph and you have an eulerian walk then it must be the case that every vertex has in degree equal to its out degree so it has to have this kind of balanced property in degree equal out degree and the natural thing you might hope for at this point is that if, if I give you a digraph that is connected and it does have this, uh, uh, this balance condition, every vertex has in degree equal to its out degree, then you might hope that indeed an Eulerian walk exists. And that's what we're going to prove. So that's the, the theorem from this lesson. So let's give that, um, <clears throat> give that up. So I'm going to let d be a digraph with underlying graph connected. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a digraph, the underlying graph is connected. The disconnected case isn't really of any interest here. Let's focus on a connected, on a digraph where the underlying graph is connected. Um, now, the statement is that this digraph is going to be Eulerian if and only if every vertex has the property that its in degree is equal to its out degree. D is Eulerian if and only if 
degree minus of v equals degree plus of v holds for every vertex. Right. So there we are. This is looking really, really, really very much like the undirected case, right? So if I give you an undirected graph, let's assume it's connected, then that undirected graph is Eulerian. It has an Eulerian walk, if and only if every vertex has even degree, just because if you're going to use a, a ver vertex, you have to come in and, 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 and sorry, if you want to use it, say, k times, you're going to visit it k times. Each time you come in and go out, that uses two edges. So you better have degree uh, 2k if you want to visit it k times. More generally, you're just going to have to have even degree. Here in the directed setting, well, now there are edges that go in and edges that come out. But if you want to have an Euler walk, every time you come in, you have to go out. And uh, that means you'd better have this, this balance property that in degree equals out degree. And uh, so the, I mean, the condition, it's, it's clear that if you want to have an Eulerian graph, you'd better satisfy that. The other direction is going to require a proof. Well, uh, okay, so let me, let me, sorry, let me write something proper here. So I, I want to prove this statement. Um, <clears throat> the, the only if here is, that's what we've just been discussing. The only if, if you have a graph that is Eulerian, then it implies that every vertex must have in degree equal to out degree. So this is, this is immediate. So for the if direction, so now I'm giving you a connected digraph with the property that at every vertex, sorry, I'm giving you a digraph where the underlying graph is connected. And I'm as well giving you the condition that uh, for every vertex, the in degree equals the out degree. And now we want to prove that there exists an Eulerian walk. Um, and we're going to do this by induction on the number of edges. So as a base case, if there are no edges, then the trivial walk works. <clears throat> um, so the challenge here is the inductive step. Um, now, uh, oh, I should, I should say I'm giving a slightly different proof than the one that's appearing in the notes. In fact, I'm exactly paralleling what we did uh, way back when, when we did Eulerian for undirected graphs. So there, there's a proof in the notes and I followed a different one in the lecture. I'm going to do exactly the same uh, exactly the, the analog of that proof that I gave in the, um, in the video before. Um, it's, uh, well, it's nice to see a couple of proofs. These things are not, I mean, it's, this is a fairly simple concept. These proofs are kind of more or less a lot of different ways of kind of getting to the same thing. Um, right. Okay. So now for the inductive step, I've got a, a directed graph. It, the underlying graph is connected. Every vertex has in degree equal to its out degree, and I know that you've got at least one edge. Well, we proved in a lemma from last time that if you have a digraph where every vertex has out degree at least one, then it must be that you have a directed cycle. Now, in this case, since the underlying graph is connected, Um, and I have at least one edge. I'm not talking about a single isolated vertex as my graph. Sorry, this is a D that's not looking the best here. Uh, so since the underlying graph is connected and you have at least one edge, I know that every vertex has out degree uh, greater than zero. Well, it's underlying connected every, uh, you have at least one edge, and I know in degree equals out degree everywhere. That's my basic assumption. Uh, uh, I know out degree is at least one for every vertex. So maybe I should say, since the underlying connect graph is connected and the number of edges is bigger than zero, every vertex V has, uh, you know, the degree plus of V equal the degree minus of v, this must be bigger than zero. So by a lemma from last time, we can choose a directed cycle.
and let's say the vertex sequence is v1 up to vk. Actually, let me give you vertex and edge sequence. Well, let me write, I'll, I'll write vertex sequence v1, v2 on up to vk, and I'll assume that um, each time you have an edge uh, from vi to vi plus 1, this is the edge, uh, let's say, vi. <clears throat> and I'll assume that the last one, so the edge from vk, V1, this will be the edge VK. Okay, so my, why don't I try and draw a picture as best I can here. So here's, um, so here's V1, V1, V2, V2. You know, might as well, sorry, let me give a name to this directed cycle, directed cycle C. <clears throat> so there we are. <clears throat> In fact, if I do that, I, I don't even need the names of the edges. So let me ignore those. It's really a good idea when you're doing math to try to only give names to the things that deserve them. It's uh, sometimes easier said than done, but it's... Uh, Anyway, it's certainly worth a try. Um, okay, so there's my directed cycle. Um, <clears throat> now we are going to do exactly the same argument that we did before in the undirected setting. We are going to take our directed graph and we are going to modify it by erasing the edges of this directed cycle. So let's consider the... Um, the directed graph that you get by erasing the edges of this directed cycle. So this is d prime, this is d minus the edges of c. Now, this directed graph is still going to have the property that every vertex has in degree equal to its out degree, right? Because for a vertex, either it was contained in the directed cycle and it lost one from its in degree or one from its out and, and one from its out degree, or it wasn't and it, those were unaffected. So this new digraph D prime is still gonna have that property. I'm gonna consider the components of D prime in the undirected graph. So let's let, let's let say H1 up to HT be the, um, <clears throat> so these are all gonna be sub digraphs of D prime and I want each of h1 up to ht to be a component in the underlying undirected graph. So, uh, so you know what I mean. So there, there won't be, um, <clears throat> so the vertex sets of h1 up to hk, that partitions the vertex set of my, of, of my original graph. And, um, <clears throat> and there will be no, no edges of any form between them. So these are the uh, subdigraphs. Of d prime, uh, uh, with the property that the that when I move to the underlying undirected graph, when I throw away the orientation, then h1 up to ht are the just the components of d prime. Uh, let's say um, oh, I'm just short of space to write a lot. So there's subdigraphs. Let me just say forming components in the underlying undirected graph. So now um, <clears throat> we started with our, our graph, we picked out a cycle, we erased the edges of the cycle, we deleted the edges of that cycle. We are going by induction on the number of edges. That means the number of edges has gone down. Each of these smaller guys, h1 up to ht, those, those are all digraphs. As we said, they are all, they have the property that their underlying graph is connected. That's exactly how we chose them. They also have the property that in degree will equal out degree at every vertex. 
and therefore by induction each one has a uh, has an Euler walk. So by induction, we may choose an Euler walk W i in H i. Now, um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Uh, when you have an Euler walk, you can always shift the starting point, right? So we can always change where we start. We just shift everything around. It's, it's really like an Euler walk. I mean, because it is a closed walk, you can just uh, cyclically permute things and you get new Euler walks. So I'm free to choose any starting point. Now, the thing is, each of these graphs, uh, h sub i, it has to contain one of the vertices of that original cycle. Otherwise, my original graph could not have been, I mean, because those are the only edges that we lost, right? We, when I'm looking at these components, these h1 up to hk, I'm seeing all the vertices. Each one of these things is a component now in the underlying undirected graph, so there are no edges between them now. There must have been edges between them before because the original digraph had the property that its underlying graph is connected. So that means we must have erased some edges between these different hi components. So, uh, or said a different way, each graph hi must contain at least one vertex of that original cycle. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, by switching the starting vertex of wi, I can arrange that the start equal, equal end vertex of the walk wi is one of those vertices of the cycle. So I'll just say uh, we may assume, so I'm just trying to be very tight here because I'm very short on space, but I, I can assume that wi uh, starts and ends at one of v1 up to v k. Oh, oh good. Oh, sorry. I thought I'd use k twice. Okay. And now I'm um, now I'm just going to be left with uh, kind of drawing the rest of this argument. This is exactly the same argument that we had in the undirected case. I think it's easy enough to say and kind of to see. So the idea here, I will um, let me sort of let me put one of some of these. Maybe maybe h1 looks like this and maybe h2 looks like this maybe this can be h sub t out here now um all we are going to do is we are going to stitch together all of these little eulerian walks and to put together a large one and it's very simple i've run out of any room to describe it but we are going to walk around this cycle that we found. We're going to just take a, a walk around that directed cycle. But each time we get to uh, some vertex V sub i, which is also contained in one of our components, maybe it's contained in the component a, uh, h1 or h2 or whatever, then we are going to pause our trip around this directed cycle to just follow that Eulerian walk uh, uh, that we found in that component, right? So in other words, if, if this was really the picture here, I would start at V1, we would walk to V2. Now we are in the, um, the vertex V2 is a vertex of H1. And that means that there's going to be, that we, uh, <clears throat> um, that means that uh, uh, the, the vertex V2, we, we may as well assume that it's the starting vertex and ending vertex of the Euler walk that we found in H h1 and so what we're going to do is we're going to walk from v1 to v2 we're going to follow that eulerian walk that we found in h1 all the way around to get back and we're going to so we'll end at v2 we started at v2 and we ended at v2 and then we're just going to continue along so again we we found this original directed cycle we are going to just take a walk around that directed cycle but each time we visit a vertex that's the start and end vertex of one of those closed walks we found in, in the, in the subdigraphs, then we'll pause our trip around the cycle to just follow that from start to finish. So, you know, we finish off where we started and then we just keep going along our merry way. And in doing so, we are going to form an Eulerian walk of the original digraph. Uh, so I, <laughs> I really can't write anything more here, but that's dot, dot, dot. 
and that's completing the proof. Um, there, there are many, many different arguments that you can use to prove this. Uh, so say there's a, there's a different one in the notes that uh, involves just choosing a maximal, um, uh, uh, choosing, say, a maximal length closed walk in the digraph. Um, anyway, this is a case where digraphs have behaved very similarly to ordinary graphs. And, um, and this condition is, is one that you'll see play out again. Somehow a regular graph where every vertex has even degree, that's Eulerian, those graphs are sometimes behaving a little bit like digraphs that have this condition that every vertex satisfies is in degree equal to out degree. Those, those classes share some, some sort of important similarities, and this is a kind of a first instance of this. So that will do it for uh, this lesson on Eulerian.